Major League Fishing Cups are back and available on My Outdoor TV. Here we go. Start your free trial on MOTV.com to enjoy new episodes of Major League Fishing Cups now. Use promo code YT30. It's the most exciting adrenaline all morning and all day long that I get all year. You're dropped into a body of water you've never fished. You don't know what kind of species are there, and you got to figure it out. 90% of the fish live in 10% of the water. What is it that could spark something in your mind that says, that looks fun? It's show up, we're dropping you off. Who's going to be the man today? Come on, baby, I need you. One hook, one hook. Oh, look at that big old thing. Yeah, baby. Get you some of that. Yes, sir! General Tires Major League Fishing. It's the Academy Sports and Outdoors Heritage Cup from Waco, Texas, presented by Magellan Outdoors. If you see something that looks good, fish it. Don't try to find that needle in the haystack in these deals because you only got so much time to figure it out. You can't really get your baits figured out until you can see how clear the water is. I'll be here all day. More information like that. Water temp 68. Wow, it's got cooled off a lot here. All these fish that's been out in the summer pattern on the main channels and stuff, they start filtering into these little pockets. That's where the bait's going. And when it's stained like this, a lot of the times those fish will be in that three to six inches of water. I think there might be smallmouth in here, but I'm not. Don't hold me to that. Can't put too much thought into it before the game starts. You just got to let the fish tell you what to do. How do you figure it out? Well, right now, you're about to find out. Welcome to General Tires Major League Fishing. 30 anglers have assembled in Waco, Texas to compete for the title of Heritage Cup champion. 10 will face off in elimination round one, but only six will move on to the sudden death rounds, putting them one step closer to the Heritage Cup trophy. Let's meet today's 10 anglers. He's the third place angler in total points from the 2020 Bass Pro Tour season, Jacob Wheeler. Next up, at number four, Jeff Sprague. With the 15th place ranking, Adrian Avina. At number 16, Chris Lane. Coming in at number 33, Justin Lucas. Close behind in 34th place, Stephen Browning. Next up at 51, Gary Klein. With the 57th place ranking, Casey Ashley. Coming in at number 69, Randy Howell. And rounding out the field in 70th, Boyd Duckett. With the anglers having no idea where they'll be fishing, they must pack for every situation. Jacob Wheeler shows us how he prepared for the unknown in today's general tire anywhere is possible. Hopefully that's enough right there. You know, anywhere is possible, Major League Fishing, and I have four different baits selected right here in front of me of what I think is gonna work here in Waco, Texas. You know, it's a fall transition and everybody knows for the most part, when it's fall, it can be good fishing, but normally it's fairly tough. And so I have a few baits that I feel like are really gonna play. Let's dive into it. First off, I have a little crankbait rod right here with my little BX Brat. It's a Rapple BX Brat. It's a small square bill, smaller profile crankbait because I feel like the shad for the most part are gonna be a little bit smaller. My next selection is topwater. Topwater fishing can be phenomenal this time of year. First off, a buzz bait, covering a lot of water, finding the active fish, and if that doesn't work, fish are being a little fickle, a little small rapala skitter pop for those fish are maybe schooling or keying on that smaller bait. And then last but not least is a little finesse jig. You know, this is sort of my cleanup bait. This is a bait that I'm gonna use to try to really just fine tune everything. Hopefully I can find the fish with my fast moving stuff that I have down here. And then when that stops working, slow down and catch a few more fish on the jig. So these are the baits that I've selected for this week here at Waco. Hopefully this works out. With no practice and no information, the anglers only have 30 minutes to run the lake and try to figure out a game plan. To get a closer look at the options they have available, let's go out to Marty Stone with today's lake breakdown. 
Chad, what the anglers are going to find this morning during their ride through with their Mercury Power boats on Lake Belton is a lake that has a lot of similarities to an Ozark Mountain Lake. Today, we're going to use the Leon River section of this lake for the zone. And that has over 6,000 surface acres and approximately 60 miles of shoreline. On the main lake, there's a lot of hard cover. Consists of bluff walls, bluff ends, chunk rock, pea gravel, and cedar trees. In the creeks, which are many, a lot of the similar rock formations. But the creek also has standing timber, laydowns, small areas of buck brush, and there's three marinas in this particular zone that's in the creeks. But within the last three weeks, there's been over 13 inches of rainfall, and it's causing this water to rise, and it's put a really good stain in the back of the creeks and up in the rivers. But the biggest X factor in today's round is this lake gets a regular stocking of smallmouth bass. When you come to the Lone Star State, you're expecting to catch big bass, and this lake has plenty of them. But what's going to catch these anglers by surprise, the big fish that they catch today could possibly be a smallmouth. Pretty basic, you're gonna have to break this thing down in a short period of time. We got a 30 minute ride around, Mercury ride around. Right now, this lake's a, obviously looks a little low, so I'm just kind of trying to see what's in the water uh, available to fish. I'm just kind of gonna idle through one of these little pockets. I like the color of water up here. I really wish there was some cover in the water. The water is about a foot from everything, all the cover. Yeah, I'm gonna throw the Berkeley Chopo and a buzz bait and Normally, I can catch nice quality fish. If it's all just rock, looks like a lot of sand right here. There's obviously timber. Really just want to know if there's grass or not. I really think that back where we took off out of, there was a lot of action. And um, I'm not seeing that up here. I think that's going to probably be the biggest key today, is finding an area that's got a little bait fish in it. And that area up there with all those buoys, I promise you, there's some, there's something going on up there. They wouldn't have all those catfish deals going. And from what I've seen, there's bait everywhere. And a lot of these pockets have standing timber, so that may come into play. Just got to put the troll motor down and go. A couple of marinas, those might come into play. I don't think I really want to go any further. I kind of, I like this the way this looks. We got a little current break right there. It would be a current break, but there's not a whole lot of current. Very stale back here. So uh, I'm going to keep on going. I like going as far as I can float a boat. I'm going to get ahead and I'm going to look up here because a lot of times, you know, that last piece, that last swing, that last piece of deep water, a lot of times will hold some fish. So this is going to be a day of change. Right now, there's not a whisk of wind. We got some high clouds. It's going to keep it dark for a little while. I should be able to get four or five fish on top water. And that's what I'm going to run. Uh, we're going to give it a few minutes, watch that score tracker, kind of let us know what it's doing. And then we're going to make adjustments from there, or we're going to be out on top one of the two. You'll find expert bass fishing know-how from Mercury MLF Pro Team Anglers at MajorLakeFishing.com backslash Mercury Pro Tactics. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. B&W Trailer Hitches. Towing Adventure. Yeti. Built for the wild. Sonic. This is how we Sonic. And by Kubota. Together, we do more. And a vibrating jig. I mean, you can't go fishing without one of those tied on this time of year. Half the boats in the field are in here right now. God. It's elimination round one of General Tire's Major League Fishing. The first group of 10 anglers are on Belton Lake, eagerly awaiting the countdown to lines in for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Heritage Cup, presented by Magellan Outdoors from Waco, Texas. Today's elimination round will consist of three periods. The top six with the most weight will advance to the sudden death round and move one step closer to the championship round. Major League Fishing's elimination round one begins now. Four, three, two, 
One, line 10. All right, let's get them. First cast of the Heritage Cup. Let the games begin. From what I can see of the watercolor, I mean, these fish are going to be shallow. Find out if there's any bass that live up here. It's really amazing how stained it is. It's like springtime stained. <clears throat> May have had some pretty big rains recently. There was one on that tree. One pound, five ounces. Yeah. On the scoreboard. First thing on the score tracker this morning is Casey Ashley, one pound and five ounces. One fiver. Fish was laid right on the end of that blowdown. A breeze is definitely going to help this place. Small now. Wait a second. Now it's one pound even. There you go. First fish of the day. Not a great big one, but smallmouth. Second angler on the score tracker, Jacob Wheeler, one pound, zero ounce. Mm, got some big ones in this pond. I'm going to bite them like, I knew that was a bass. First bite this morning was a drum, so good to get a bite, though. Got some sticks, got some rocks, you know, you got stuff in the water. I think the key is going to be finding out if they're in the backs or if they're out off the main. Looks like he's hooked into, he got foul hooked when he hit it. Come on, little rascal, come on, little rascal. I think he's hooked good in that meat. Yeah. Hooked up, hooked up. Is it a smallmouth? It is a smallmouth. They are in you. OK. Chill out, chill out, chill out. One pound, five ounce. One pound, five ounce. I just like that all day. Bass number one, Heritage Cup. Thank you, buddy. Hopefully that one will be a sign of more to come. One pound, five ounces. <laughs> that answers that question. There's smallmouth in there. He was right on the bank. You see that cast that went way up under the tree? He looked like he jumped off the rock to get it on the bank. <laughs> you don't think you're going to be fishing for a smallmouth bass in this watercolor, let alone being in Texas. I don't know if he's going to do it. He might. If I don't know if I could swing him in or not, I don't want to take a chance. Oh, go, go. Come here, come here. I got him. He's hooked better than I thought. One pound, two ounces. Hey, hey. He hit it like a five-pounder, though. <laughs> now, we'll get started with a one-two for sure, and we'll take him. We'll take a hundred more of them, too. One pound, zero ounces. One zero. Ooh. A close one. We'll take him, though. Dog, oh, he jumped on that thing, boy. Son, I thought it was a big one. All right, Gary, I got a score tracker update. Jeff Sprague just put his first bass on the score tracker, a one pound, two ounce. And Randy Howell just caught his second bass, one pound, zero ounces. He now leads with two pounds, five ounces. I hear you. That, that fish is exactly where it should have been. It came right off that lay down out here in this flat water. A smallmouth bass in the middle of Texas. That's a first for me. Berkeley Chapo. Coming to the rescue, but we need to rig some stuff. I'm telling you right now, I was not prepared for this clear of water. Picked a decent starting spot out of all the places anyway. At least there's some fish around here. They haven't been big so far, but there's always big ones if you got little ones and a lot of bait around like this. Yeah, he's gonna go pound. One pound, eight ounces. <laughs> nice. Well, it seemed like there should be some down through here with all this bait. 
Survival in today's elimination round requires these anglers to keep their eyes open to today's conditions and how the bass are reacting. Here's Marty Stone for today's Wiley X Eyewear, more than meets the eye. One of the biggest keys in the fall of the year is for anglers to understand bait fish movement, specifically shad. Oftentimes, anglers think it's the length of the day or the water temp that's the biggest factor, and that's anything but the truth. The truth is it's all about oxygen content. In late summertime, there's a thermocline, and shad suspend out in the main lake and in the creeks. But when the fall of the year happens, fronts arrive, and fronts have two things that's with them, wind and water. The wind on the main lake creates waves, and those waves produce oxygen and also stir up the plankton, and that's what the shad are gonna swim to. The rain is gonna bring fresh water in the backs of the creeks and the rivers, and with fresh water creates additional oxygen content. Thus, the shad move back into those areas seeking more oxygen. The anglers that dial in the shad movement today on Lake Belton will be the ones that are successful in this elimination round number one. At least we're back around bait. You feel like you can catch one when you see all this bait. Up there where we started, it's amazing, but there, it was just dead. There was nothing, no life up there. Slow down. Slow down. That's what it was while I go to. Great big old small man. One pound, 13 ounces. 13. Make me the daily beam. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. There's a good one. That's a big one. Well, we're here. Switch the bait, and he's got both of them in it. Yeah, I like what I see. One pound, nine ounces. Okay. Maybe we'll keep piddling around here. Adrian Chris Lane has now put his first fish on the score tracker. Oh, he weighed one pound, nine ounces. All right, I'm gonna fish right up to that log up there in the water, and we are dipping. But see, you would think they'd stayed right here. So when that bait starts pushing into the back of the pockets for the fall, you know, those fish can, they start to come in and start to ambush. Well, we got a bite for a smallmouth, but I ran down a little stretch that looked good. Didn't get another bite, so. Let's just keep on running around and see what this place has to offer. Like, that's a good one right there. Cool. No, man, they fight hard out here, but it's a... One pound, two ounces. A lot of smaller fish in here, it seems like. I don't want a one pound, two ounce them, but if we have to, we will. Welcome back to General Tires Major League Fishing. God dang it. I think he had it for like 10 minutes. <laughs> We're 45 minutes into elimination round one, and eight of today's 10 pros have posted weight to the score tracker. Randy Howell and Chris Lane are the first to double dip, so they're at the top of the heap. Today's competition is far from over, and there are plenty of giant South Texas bass for these anglers to find. I think that point's got one or two fish on it. We might catch one before we get there. I just wanted to come back through here to see if that bait size made a difference between grabbing it, you know, eating the bait compared to just hitting at it because it looks good. One pound, two ounces. All right, on the board. On the board. Gary Klein also caught his first fish that weighed one pound, two ounces. God, we ought to catch one right here, buddy. Baits in here everywhere. A lot of wood. Definitely don't retrack your ground, you know what I mean? Keep running all brand new stuff till you can you know, hit a stretch, boom, boom, hit a stretch.
One pound, two, or one pound, three ounces. All right. Number two. Kind of moved over here where it seemed like there was better quality fish blowing up. Gary Klein has caught his second fish. He's now at two pounds and five ounces, tied for second place. Just going to move right up here, not far. I'm just throwing a little topwater bait, a real subtle finesse topwater. And I'm just kind of uh, shimming it, quivering it. I'm not trying to walk it side to side. I'm just kind of just easing it. Almost like a term that I use an awful lot, it's called V-waking. It's always a process of eliminate. Ooh, I had no, I was a stick. Some, I was a stick fish. Keeper, oh, oh, oh. Don't, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Here. One pound, 11 ounces. One pound, three ounces. Okay. Gary, with that last bass, one pound, 11 ounces, you're now at four pounds, zero ounces. You currently lead. Yeah, I'd like to catch all I can right now. Yeah, I mean, this is just a, the Berkeley Chapo is an awesome bait uh, for covering water. So in this instance, you know, I've never been on this lake. I'm trying to learn it as I go. It's just a great bait to pick up and start searching. One pound, two ounces. Yep. Yeah, like, I miss the good old days where it was easy, you know? You throw up there, and you catch one. You throw up there, you catch another one. Every time I think about moving, I come around the corner, and I see something else I need to fish. I almost didn't fish that. I'm glad I did. Still hadn't figured out, really, what the deal is yet. Come on, baby. It's probably the biggest fish of the morning so far. It's like that one that jumped off on me earlier. One pound, five ounce. All right, one five smallmouth. You gonna give me a score tracker update? Yeah, I don't want it, but if you don't have anything, I'm good. Gary Klein has caught his fourth bass. Well, he's from Texas. Klein may be the only one that's ever seen this lake today since he's a Texas boy, but I don't know. I made a transition to a little, a little swim bait on a little Berkeley 16th ounce head that I could just swim below the surface. And literally that was my first couple cast with it, so this might be the transition that I need to continue to catch them. God, that's a good one, man. They came back and got it, thankfully. That's a better one. That's a better one. Yeah, thank you, Lord. He ate it, too. One pound, 11 ounces. Good luck now. Yep. 11. 11. Long and skinny like me. <laughs> I'll take him. Randy Howes now at four pounds, zero ounces in second place. That dropped you to fourth place of two pounds and eight ounces. A lot of life, a lot of little bluegill and baby bass. And felt like Bill Dance pausing on that one. It's hard for me to do, to pause. But he swirled up on it, and I just kept winding it slow down, and boom, he come back and got it. That's a good sign. He wasn't even on a stick up or anything. The deal is, when they put those signs right there on these docks, you get these educated bass that can read, they just not gonna be around one. 
You gotta give them uneducated bass that don't read very well. There's bait everywhere. Every now and then you see fish kind of push them, but they're not really schooling. Which tells me they're super scattered. That one's not. Quit. Quit. Jack wagon. Get up in the boat. Ah, we on a roll now, boys. One pound, four ounce. Uh-huh. We got this. Good old Yeti man over yonder. I'm telling you. I mean, just pull up and get two bites. Bam, boom. Man, it'd be nice to figure out a little something. Because every fish you catch is going to jump you up. That's not the position you want to be in in the third period. Just having to catch one to make it in, need a little cushion. Your small mouth. One pound, two ounces. All right, he was fighting like a one pounder. <laughs> them small mouth, boy, they have no give up in them. Welcome back to General Tires Major League Fishing for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Heritage Cup, presented by Magellan Outdoors from Waco, Texas. One pound, one ounce. All right. We're still in period one, but Gary Klein isn't wasting time. He's caught a flurry of bass using his unique topwater technique. But Gary can't count his chickens just yet. At this point in the competition, any bass of any size has the potential to shake up the score tracker in an instant. The MLF action is just getting started. Get back in here, and I mean, we're gonna have to work hard. And what I mean by that is probably knowing you gotta make a lot of cast and we'll pick up a topwater bait and throw it. Now, I've gone to a little bit bigger bait that's got a knock in it. And that's just because, you know, it's a little bit of a chop. I gotta quit throwing the topwater because that just ain't happening. If it was, if that was happening, be easier and everybody would be catching them a little bit better, I think. Holy. That felt like a good one there. Let me hit it. Oh my gosh, that's a good one. Not as big as I thought, but he's a keeper. Tom, what a bite. Son. One pound, five ounces. One five. All right, I feel one. I feel one. Come on, bass. Oh, I see him up there on that little old stick. Here in a minute, old Big Five gonna get a hold of this thing. Well, he's eating rocks. Almost looks like a rock, but I don't know what it is. Piece of digested something, another. Some kind of Texas creature. <laughs> what I mean, we gotta work hard today, but we'll get this figured out. I mean, just drilled it. One pound, nine ounces. Either here, they're here. Just figure out how to catch them. Jerry, I have a score tracker update. Chris Lane had just added his third bass, one pound, nine ounces, giving him four pounds, four ounces. I saw him down there. Trying to hit isolated stuff to give you sort of that clue. So like, I felt like some of the fish were sort of suspended, so there's only been a couple docks. So I'm going to run over here to this marina dock over here where we took off from. Fish it for a little while. Nope. Yeah, that's a bass. Oh my gosh. I thought it was a white bass. Two pounds, six ounces. Dropping them giants on them, two sixes. <laughs> I thought it was a white bass. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, that old Thunder Cricket doing work on them. Now nah, here. Oh, what this is. Bass. Small mouth. Didn't even know there was small mouth in here. Oh, 
Let me get up in the boat. Quit. One pound, four ounces. Brown fish in the state of Texas. One pound, six ounces. One six, oh, one six are on a old bladed jig. <laughs> yeah, don't let them get on that thing, son. I can just tell you that right now. We will make it rough on them boys. Just cranking the square bill. Uh, last few bites I've got, it's been on isolated rock, or a big rock that sticks out a lot farther than the rest of them. So I'm just gonna run some of these bluff balls. Seems like every time I see a piece of isolated cover, I get bit or catch one. You know, you, you sit in here in your mind, you're thinking small mouth, small mouth, small mouth, and all of a sudden there's a large mouth shows up. And he's like, well, you jack wagon, you know? You got a great big mouth. Why didn't you hit that top water bait? Fish. Yes. It felt fishy, man. I knew it. One pound, 13 ounces. Oh. First play. Five minutes. Boy, if we could just just get us one uno more. It's just not a whole lot of that that type of stuff in in this little arm I'm at right now. And I don't like I said, I I don't really know if that was much much of a clue or not. Can't really gauge one bite, one fish off a pattern or anything like that. Yes, sir. Stop it, please. One pound, 11 ounces. There you go. All right, well, there are some large mouth in here. All right. Jacob Wheeler's caught his second fish. He's down in seventh place. Randy, you're still in second place. You need two pounds, three ounces. All right. Let's do that right here in one cast. Come on, fish. You know you're on that point somewhere. We're gonna see how fast we can reel one in. Five, four, three, two, one. Lines out, that's the end of period one. Woo! Well, we did not tear it up this period. I'll give you a little insight. I'm not in last place, but that's all I can tell you. Execution means everything, because normally when you have those opportunities, you have gotta get the scoreable bass in the boat. And I really had several opportunities that I just didn't key on this morning. Today could have went a little bit better for me, but I'm, you know, I'm happy to be where I am, but I've got a lot of work to do. I mean, we're not off to a bad start. I think we're in fourth. Uh, you know, that's where we need to be. It's just a little bit slow. The guys are starting to kind of dial it in. There's some fish being caught. But... Belton is a good lake. I mean, you know, somebody can pop some really good fish. It does have a lot of them three to five pounders in it. And I'm gonna change up. I'm not gonna continue to do this. We have no wind, high skies and I'm gonna go back up the river and start fishing the jig. Kind of try to light them up, period, to try to start on a whole different side of the lake. Because I know up there, you know, the water's muddy. You can be a little bit dirtier than this. You can go up there and throw a crankbait all day, maybe catch two or three or four fish, and that might be enough to do it. So that's the plan. We'll see you on period two. My Outdoor TV is your home for every exciting moment of the 2022 MLF season. Every episode, including live events. <laughs> yes, sir! Try it free at MyOutdoorTV.com. Use promo code YT30. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by Berkeley. Your fish, our science. Wiley X Eyewear. Go confidently. Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Favorite Fishing. The future of fishing and by Academy Sports and Outdoors. During the first break, having gone through and only caught one fish, I felt like the area I was in was not where to be, even though it did have fish. I'm thinking, maybe this isn't one of those big fish Texas lakes that you hear about all the time. The best thing to do, let's just size down everything and let's go try to catch numbers. You always hit that lull. that's usually right at the end of the first period and into the second. It's always a tough period in the score tracker everywhere you go. So you kind of got to take that into account. I mean, nobody was blasting them. So I'm thinking what I'm doing, I'm not catching that many, but you know, I'm, I'm staying in the hunt. I'm 
I'm catching one here and there. If I keep doing it, eventually I'm gonna catch one that's gonna make the light bulb go off in your head. A little light bulb happened to go off in my head, and I'm like, okay, you know, you barely fished any of this stuff that's out. Now it's time to really focus on that a little more in the next period. We're gonna make them bias. If I could get on a solid pattern, I was right there to be in contention. And, and you know, I'm just a few pounds out of really popping up that leaderboard. While our pros make their adjustments for period two, let's take a look at the score tracker. Gary Klein has a target on his back, and the rest of the field is gunning for him. He's our must-add point position leader heading into period two, but his lead is small. Jeff Sprague landed a two-pound, six-ounce bass that launched him from eighth to third place. If our pros can locate the hefty Lake Belton bass, they could do some damage in a hurry. Five, four, three, two, one, you can go. When you ain't catching them, you just uh, stay close, put the troll motor down. We would come in, and uh, this was just kind of a, the entrance to that creek that we were putting in that here. And up the lake where we got our bites was kind of very similar. But I wanted to stop here because the water's a lot cleaner down here, just to see, you know, what kind of a difference that would make. I'm surprised I've not seen more like schooling activity. Really surprised about that. I thought for sure you'd see more fish just boom, boom, you know? Gosh, there's got to be a bass on some of them stumps. If you just hit that stump right with a crankbait, we'll find out. But the problem is, is can you hit it? I think this one's going to go. One pound, zero ounces. Just throw this all day in the backs and just work, work hard, hard, hard. Oh my God, oh my God. Not what I expected, boys. Not what I expected. Oh. But we'll take it. Get you some of that. Three pounds, 10 ounces. Oh my goodness, look at the head on that booger. Just, he's got no body to him, but hey, that's the kind of fish you need to make moves. Jeff Sprague caught another fish. It was three pounds, 10 ounces. Dang. Moves him into second place with seven pounds, two ounces. Okay, so now you got it. Got me intrigued right here. Sometimes when it's in these events, where it's real tough like what we have right now. You know, if you can catch bigger fish, it'll make bigger moves on that leaderboard. Sprague, no one's Sprague. Who knows what Sprague's doing? And this tree ought to be a magnet right here. I'm surprised there hasn't been one come up out of the log jet or those laydowns that are sitting out there. I haven't seen that. God, I'd love to catch like a six. Come on, be a bass. Be a bass. Is that a bass? Oh, my God, it's a gigantic bass. Oh, my Lord, please let him stay on. Good Lord, that's a big bass. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> Good, look at that big old bass. Hmm. How many times did I throw on that bass? Oh, my gosh, thank you, Jesus. That is a giant. Put that on the score tracker, boys. Five pounds, six ounces. Five pounds, six ounces. Holy cow. Five pounds, six ounces. Texas, boy, they're all big in Texas. You just got to find them. He about took the rod out of my hand. <laughs> Good God. I figured them out. Just do this all day, and I'll probably put that bigger one on in the third period, I think. One pound, 12 ounces. They're just coming out of the woodworks and eating it. 
power pole right there. Look, that's what it's all about. The wind's blowing me. I threw in there with a couple other baits, didn't get bit. Power pole down because the wind was blowing. I sat here for probably five minutes with the power poles holding me down. Made me get perfect angles with the cast. And when I come across the side of that log just right, that triggered that bite. That's why them power poles are so important. Starting to get a little dialed in. Not 100%, but a little bit. One pound, seven ounces. Right. Hey, one seven, I mean, I think the fish are probably getting a little more active, to be honest with you. The wind's starting to blow. Uh, we're going to have to catch them, because I think everybody else is probably going to start catching them, too. Jeff Sprague's caught another fish, moving him into second place with eight pounds, nine ounces. Nice. That's a little chunk. One pound, four ounces. Just belly, all belly on that dude right there. I mean, you can see how that three, almost four pounder car earlier was all head, no belly. That, there, that guy there, just all belly. Boyd score tracker now has Jeff Sprague in second place. He's at nine pounds, 13 ounces. You just don't run across them. You just don't run into them. I really like a high speed reel uh, when I'm throwing this Thunder Cricket. And I like it when I'm winding about anything, to be honest with you. Come on, fish. There's no reason that you can't pick a dang Carolina rig up and catch a mess of fish. One pound, four ounces. One pound, hey, that's a good, good few bites down this stretch. The wind, a uh, little depth, uh, it's a really good little area. I mean, this is something I can let rest and probably come back and get a few more bites off of. Jeff Sprague has moved into first position with 11 pounds, one ounce, and you currently have 10 pounds, 11 ounces in second. You need six ounces. All right, let's go get it, man. There's obviously quite a few fish set up on this bank. That's that's a, that's a really, it's a really good for your morale. and. Uh, you know, for where your head's at. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Heritage Cup, presented by Magellan Outdoors from Waco, Texas. I don't know how he's hooked. Got him. Thank you, gosh dang. Dude, this is something new right here. Bunker hog inside his face. Two pounds, two ounces. Two, two, it's a solid one. Solid two, two. The big bass have finally showed up to play here on Lake Belton. Randy Howell and Jeff Sprague caught the two biggest bass of the day back to back, landing them in the top two spots on the score tracker. For those struggling at the bottom, they need to change up their tactics and locate the quality bass. For more on that, here's Marty Stone for today's six hour success insight. In the fall of the year, an angler's truly got a fish good conditions, and they change by the minute. Early in this elimination round, Gary Klein took advantage of a topwater bite at the lower end of the zone in the clear water, and he had a technique that was very unique. He was using a walking bait, but instead of making the walking bait walk, he actually reeled it super fast, causing it to skip. Clear water, that made those fish react. He took a lead. Now as the sun's come out, Jeff Sprague and Randy Howe have moved to the upper reaches of this particular zone, and that's where you're gonna find the more dirtier water. These fish are now starting to relate to the cover, but when an angler's in the dirty water, he's got a generator reaction bite as well. And how does he do that? Multiple casts, a single specific cover. There's a lot of bait in the area, and you've gotta hit the same cover over and over. Sprague's using a vibrating jig, Howe's using a spinner bait, but both are having success and both are doing it in dirty water. I figure we could run this and at least get a handful of bites. The thing is, if you get a bite doing this, most of the time, it ain't gonna be a little one. I'm just flipping a Texas rig. My weight size is a little light for this. I was planning on fishing shallower with this. I only got about a quarter ounce. It's a Berkeley bunker hog on it. Just four out hooks, just textbook, just 
flip and 17 pound fluorocarbon. One pound, two ounces. All right, one, two. It's a keeper. Dude, I was over that. 15 ounces, non scoreable. Jeez, dude. I thought he was bigger than the envelope. <laughs> like, yeah. One pound, eight ounces. All right. One eight, but I'm just chipping at him. Been a little movement on the score tracker. Gary Klein's back in first place now, 11 pounds, two ounces. Moving you to second place was 11 pounds, one ounce. I know there's an old big laying in here somewhere. There's a big one. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, I know there's got to be good ones in here. I could hear him start ting, 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 ting. All right, we got it. That was the clue. It's about the size of the one there that chased me earlier. Two pounds, eight ounces. Two and a half pounder. All right. One pound, two ounces. I'm wasting my time or not, you know? I mean, surely one of them can be a pound. You would think. There it is. That's a big one. That's a good one, too. Two pounds, seven ounces. Two seven. Two pounds. Two pounds, seven ounces. Nice one right there. On North Carolina spinner bait up about that deep, boys. That's what I like. <laughs> oh, he knocked it. Randy Howe's now in first place, 13 pounds, two ounces. Come on, fishes. Dad gummit. There he was. Dang. Pulled it away from him. Power pole down again, made three or four casts, and got it right on the spot. And you got to bump that blade on that piece of wood. As soon as it bumped that piece of wood, bam. It's that good old shallow fall reaction bite. Big small now. Yes, sir. <clears throat> two pounds, eight ounces. Another two and a half pounder. All right, twin two and a half pounders. This one's a smallmouth A. Got down here in this clear water. We're all right. We're all right. Start pack starting to drift away. You don't have to catch them in the first. The weight doesn't matter in the first. All that matters is if you have a pattern. Then if you have a pattern, you just go execute it in the second and third. If you don't get a pattern by the end of the second, you just might as well load up and go home because it's it's over for the most part. Like that. Mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Golly, Pete, come here. There we go. One pound, ten ounces. One ten. One ten. Not a big one, but that's a great morale booster right there. Yep. Running down the side of that log, and I watched him. I watched him get it. About 99% convinced that they're not out here on the main. I bet there's 10, 15 bass scoreable right in here right now. Just feel like there is. And see how many times we've casted all this stuff, and all of a sudden, one bait change, one reaction, and boom, you catch one. You need to catch me a couple more. Just end this period on a good note and have something to start off with. We're gonna catch a couple of piggins. Uh, Y'all don't even know. We're gonna catch a couple of dang biggins. Oh, that's a big one. Come on, Lord. Oh, 
Wait. That's a big one. Another big one. Big old mouth. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my gosh. Three pounds, six ounces. See that? Boy, he looked, he looked giant in the water. Look at him. That's a pretty fish. Not fat enough, though. Just skinny right there. Love that bite. Mm. Look like a five pounder, though. Oh, my goodness. I love it. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. There he is. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my gosh. Here in period two, Randy Howell has shown us that you can reach first place quicker when your bass are thicker. He caught a three pound and a five pound largemouth in this period alone, giving Randy a six pound lead over Gary Klein even though he's caught two fewer fish than Klein. At the end of the day, only the top six anglers will advance to sudden death. Just so much wood in the water, if you can just get angles. Angles are so key. Casting and getting that bait to run down and bump off something just right and trigger them to bite. Jack wagons, get off there, you little rat. There. Two pounds, four ounces. Yes, sir. There we go. I've seen a couple with you, too. There's a big one, dude. I mean, a big one. <clears throat> Stay on. Oh, my God, dude. It's a freaking giant. Nope, nope, one hook, one hook. Ow, Come here. Come here. Come here. One ounce. Bam! Eight pounder just choked it. <laughs> yes, sir. Look at that. Gorgeous. Let her go. And wow, let's catch another one. Holy Toledo, that thing. Whoosh! Whoosh! Chris Lane has now moved into second position. 15 pounds, one ounce. He's three pounds, one ounce behind you now. Oh, what'd he catch? His last fish was a, you're not gonna believe this, but eight pounds, one ounce. Oh my God, he got an eight pounder. <laughs> I guarantee you, watch what I tell you, when the TV show comes on, I bet he caught it on a plopper. Top water bait. Them old Texas giants. Shoot, he'd have made the cut with that one fish. I didn't think it was that big. I was thinking three or four pounds, you know? Four pounder, about as hard as it crushed it. I mean, it was good. And then when it came up and jumped, I'd say, uh-oh. Well, let's, <laughs> let's try to catch just a big one. <laughs> what a catch. What a catch. One pound, 11 ounces. One eleven. That's it. Picked that little shallow square build up that time, got him to react. Boy, when I got away from him, I got away from him. OK. We're about to shoot across this place, about across this thing, though. That one might, that one might keep. Yeah, I think that one will. One pound, five ounces. Sweets. You got five minutes remaining. Might have time for two more casts in here. Two good looking spots. That one right there. 
and then up there where it cuts, there's two pounds between sixth and tenth place. Good night. Well, they'll get their money's worth on the on that at the end of the day. Two minutes. Plenty of time to catch this one bass fish right here. Two pounds, zero ounces. There we go. Ooh, Jacob Wheeler just caught another fish. 11 pounds, 15 ounces. What is the deal? Come on, bass. This little pattern we're on right now seems to be working pretty decent. We just got to get them in the boat. 30 seconds. Pretty basically, you're going to run back out here in the third period, you got a one in four chance of making it. You don't have to beat them all. You just got to beat that, beat those four behind us. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. Lines in, into period two. All right. Well, I would say that was a pretty good period. Hey, period two. <laughs> Eight pounds, one out. I got some work to do, guys. Knowing that you can catch an 8-1, I'll go fish two and a half more hours and enjoy every minute of it. My Outdoor TV is your home for every exciting moment of the 2022 MLF season. Boom! Every episode, including live events. <laughs> yes, sir! Try it free at MyOutdoorTV.com. Use promo code YT30. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Squincher. Hydration that works. Six Sour. Never settle. Waco Convention and Visitors Bureau. Waco, the heart of Texas. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back to General Tires Major League Fishing for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Heritage Cup. Presented by Magellan Outdoors from Waco, Texas. Chris Lane has landed a haymaker, wrangling in an eight pound, one ounce monster bass off of a rock wall as you can see here in today's favorite fishing overview of the day. It's going to be a big period here. Big period. I need to catch, you know, about 10, 12 pounds in this period. Honey jalapeno, baby. Let's go for it. We're about to grind it on the bank. That's me right there. The anglers are in the final break of elimination round one. While they gear up for period three, let's take a look at the score tracker. As we enter the final two and a half hours of elimination round one, the fight for a top six position is heating up. Only a slim two pounds separates sixth place from 10th. With the giant bass lurking beneath the surface of Lake Belton, fates can change in a hurry. Chris Lane's massive catch is the Berkeley Big Bass of the day and has given Chris a 10 pound cushion over the sixth place elimination line. For more on that, let's go out to Marty Stone for today's Yeti Cooler Talk. Fall of the year, it can be tough. And then you drop an 8-1 on them. <laughs> Talk about that bite. Yeah, um, just an explosion that you that you wait on. You know, I've had five or six of them prior to that just not eat it. Now, not that big. But when that one wanted to commit, it was just a ooze. And then I had it, and it's just pulling, pulling. I'm like, man, is this a big striper, or what do I got? Because I didn't think the explosion was an 8-1. It looked like a three or four pounder. And then it jumped, and I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> so tough tournament. But now you're you're 15 pounds, and that elimination line's at five. What's the strategy going out? Because it looks like you're in good shape. Yeah, um, these guys are the best in the world. And you know, you got two and a half hours left in third period. I think the main thing is to stay focused on catching at least two fish this period. To not let the three, four, and five guys start to catch them, and then you have six and seven catch them, and then next thing you know, you need 20 pounds to make the cut. So focus, because they might find the bait that those three and four pounders start to actually eat. And, you know, I mean, I was lucky to catch that one out of all the bites that I had. So one more like that would do it. Chris Lane has showed us the potential in this lake. He looks in great shape to make sudden death. But he's got one more period 
We'll see if he can add in there and possibly catch another giant. Five, four, three, two, one. Your first out. Let's see. I mean, you know, I said this morning I was going to spend some time in here. Might as well be now. You know, we caught that good fish out of here flipping earlier. And so I wanted to just see if maybe there was more in here than just that one. That could be a three or four pounder sitting right there, just waiting to ambush this thing. And then that big rock, oh my gosh. One bigger. There she is. Like that. Oh. Man, I cannot wait to get this bait back out there. Five pounds, two ounces. Pow, baby! Man, I've been waiting on this all year to get these kind of bites and these kind of explosions. Makes you think you really know what you're doing sometimes. Gary, I have a score tracker update. While we were running, Chris Lane caught a five pound, two ounce. Wow, what a he, hammer. He moves into first place with 20 pounds, three ounces. Come on, bass fish. Right over that rock sitting out there, way out in the water. I think they really like the ones that are sticking out, out. Good gosh, man. What is he doing? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, sir. Got us one. One pound, eight ounces. Pound and a half. I had a bite on this pile, and I pulled them off, and I caught two shorts on it. And I kind of figured out how they were relating to it. It's interesting. The bait was in here really good this morning, and now it's not move to a different area, I guess. Another one. I don't know if this one's going to go. It's going to be close. One pound, one ounce. Sweet. Sweet. That's two. I figured out how they were set up. The six paws now, seven pounds and 13 ounces. That's not what I wanted to hear. What happened? Adrian Davina has moved up to seven pounds and 13 ounces. He's caught two fish pretty close together. Oh, wow, we're getting way behind quickly. <laughs> Third period. You gotta be on them by now, man. It's just so hard to catch up if you get behind. And we still really have nothing. Made it good. Caught one there earlier. One pound, 10 ounces. One ten. One ten. Way to start it back. Yeah, eat it too, boy. They're chomping right now. Randy Howell has caught another fish. He's moved back into first place. He's now at 21 pounds, seven ounces. We'll fish this point, and then uh, we'll figure out something else. Mm, thank you, Lord. That's good. That's good to me right there. Long cast again, power pole down. And my favorite rod for a little swim bait that I throw this year is a seven foot six Abu Garcia Fantasisa. I like to throw that longer spinning rod. You can tend to get a little bit further cast out of them. I throw 10 pound. This is 10 pound Berkeley X5 and six pound fluorocarbon, real light line. What in the sand? Oh my God. Did you see that giant bass? Holy cow, dude. Oh. 
broke my line. Broke my line. Oh, gosh, time to get in the trolling motor. Yep, yeah, he's still on there. Oh, come on, come on. Yes, sir. Oh. Jacob, that's a fish landing violation. Two-minute penalty. Unreal. One pound, four ounces. <laughs> that little smallmouth right there gave me fish. Here, I got a score tracker update for you. Jacob Wheeler's moved to third, 13 pounds, three ounces. Surprising, Klein stalled out like he did. He was pretty steady for a long time. Broke my line, look at this. Broke my line, set the hook way up the line. I have him on, I'm like, oh yeah, awesome. I see right there, I grab it, get it up there. There we go. Well, it quite obviously is not hard to catch one. I'm just making it hard, because they catch it. I only caught one of them little guys. Them big ones are off those points, so. Oh, Smalley. Good one. I knew it had to be there where all them shad were. One pound, six ounces. Smalley. Two pounds, four ounces. Two, four. Two pounds, four ounces. That's a long, skinny one. Look at that. They need to be eating. It's because they're eating stuff this small, they can't get big. <laughs> They'd eat some real big shad. They'd be all right. Randy Howe has caught his 11 fish. Last pass weighed two pounds, four ounces. He now has a total of 23 pounds, 11 ounces. Come on, Biggie. Finally caught one off that log right there. I've tried to catch one off that log all the time earlier today. <laughs> and I knew they were there. I've seen them chase bait right there twice. Crawled it over that log that time, just crawling it, and boy, he. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. That's a good one. That one will keep. One pound, six ounces. Jacked up jaw. Dang grinder, boy. 45 minutes into the final period, and Chris Lane and Randy Howell are trading blows at the top of the score tracker. But what matters most today is securing a top six position to advance to the sudden death round. Adrian Avina is making that a tough task for the bottom four anglers. Avina's recent hot streak has put over five pounds between sixth and seventh place. If there's going to be a big one, be right here. You got some big rock right here that comes out, right out into the main channel. If one doesn't bite it, then we're going to get in the really, really clear water. There we go. Got one, small now. That one right there, literally, I cast it over the rock. <clears throat> got him. One pound, 13 ounces. There you go. A little combination of everything. Wheeler's in third at 15 pounds, zero ounces. Well, Wheeler might have been figuring them out. He started coming. With combos, small mouth, large mouth. I've seen some big ones today. This place is God, I'll tell you what, it's fishing tough, not a lot of bites. <laughs> There's always hope. One pound, eight ounces. One eight. That's big and oh, big and. One pound, eight ounces. Need one of them big ones. Stephen Browning has caught his fifth fish. His last fish weighed one pound, eight ounces. He now has a total of seven pounds, five ounces. He remains in seventh place. You remain in sixth place with 11 pounds, three ounces. Yeah, we don't want Browning catching them, though. Dang. Slow down, boy. Need five more of those. I'm just throwing a little 316 ounce shaky head. 
all those fish I caught in the dirty water was on the steeper blank banks. <clears throat> I'm surprised I haven't got a bite. I'm seeing a lot of bait, you know, scatter with my bait, so there's bait fish in there, you know. One pound, five ounces. That's huge. That is huge right there for me. Give us a quality bite. God. Come here. Uh, Jacob, that's a fish landing violation. Two minute penalty. <laughs> there we go. Sucker bit it right there at the boat. Gosh dang. Three pounds, one ounce. Best one of the day right there. Best one of the day right there. Heck yeah. Sorry, little buddy. Come off the hook, but thank you for biting. I'll let you go real nice. And... Jacob Wheeler in third is now up to 18 pounds, one ounce. OK, folks. My time to get back on the driving range, you know what I mean? Pretty fish. Really pretty, just beautiful color, you know? Really healthy, nice, good looking fish. God almighty. God. Jeez. That was another seven, eight pounder. Hey, what I'll do, I'm gonna go back to the creek we launched in and get up in that stained water and throw a crankbait. And see if we get lucky enough to find a little group of them. Big and big, giant one. Giant one, boys. Giant one. Big and big and boys. Come on, don't do that. There we go. Yeah, baby, yes. There we go. Freaking big. Four pounder? Three pounds, 12 ounces. Solid one. I thought it was a dang six or seven pounder for sure. Oh my gosh, look at them coming after it. There's just like three of them right there. That's a good one. Hell no. Two pounds, zero ounces. There he is. There he is, a big one. Oh, he just came off. Oh my god, he came off. Look at that big boy. Golly. Jacob, those two fish bring your total to 23 pounds, 13 ounces. Moves you into first place ahead of Randy Howe with 23 pounds, 11 ounces. That was that was a pretty quick dang turnaround. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's another giant. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, what a hog. What a hog. Yes, sir, baby! Pow! Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> I mean, just wait for it. Six pounds, two ounces. Six two, baby. This place has got some hogs in it. Chris Lane caught another one. Good for Chrissy. Six pounds, two ounces. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably a freaking giant. He's in 27 pounds, 11 ounces. Chris got him something figured out, don't he? Thank you, Lauren. Car tracker update. Welcome back to General Tires Major League Fishing. There we go. Yeah, baby, yes. Best one of the day right there. Best one of the day right there. Heck yeah. After spending the majority of the day in the middle of the pack, Jacob Wheeler found a hot spot and landed nearly nine pounds of bass in only 15 minutes. He enjoyed a brief taste of first place, 
before Chris Lane slammed a six pound gorilla on the scales and reclaimed the top spot. 30 minutes remain to determine which six anglers will be advancing to sudden death. I've just pulled into an area where it's a lot, it's a lot clearer water. I picked up a little flipping jig and uh, went, you know, went 50 yards and caught a little smallmouth. So that's kind of what I'm doing now is just going to try to push that for a few minutes in the last 30 minutes just to see. One pound, six ounces. Jacob Wheeler's caught another fish. He remains in second place. He is now at 26 pounds and seven ounces. Oh, man, just let me catch one more. I'm going to give him one little run down through here, because it could be decent. You're still holding about a five pound cushion with 20 minutes to go. Dude, I still don't feel comfortable, but by God, I feel better you know, after catching that one fish, but I'd sure like to, you know, if I'd executed better today. Up there against the bank in nothing. If it's a bass. <laughs> that was close. That was a slight touch. I'm not going to call it. Two pounds. 12 ounces, 212. All right. Boy, Duckett has just caught his fourth bass. It weighed two pounds, 12 ounces. Holy cow. He has now moved into eighth place with seven pounds, 11 ounces. The top water might be even better because you could cover it. It's, that fish was dead against that boulder right there in about a foot of water. That's wild. Close. Two pounds, zero ounces. 15 minutes remaining. Come on, about too fast. Between Chris and I, as of late, I definitely want to somehow, some way, generate another bite to potentially give myself a chance to win. I mean, that's why, I'm, that's why I get out here in the morning. That's why we get up in the morning, is to win, you know? Main Lake Bluffs. I bet you that's what Chris has been doing, too. Interesting. Whoop. Slight Come touch. Here. Not a yeah. penalty. One pound, four ounces. One four smolly. Chris Lane has caught another bass. It weighed one pound, four ounces. He now has a total of 30 pounds, one ounce. Yeah, they're doing something different. What a strike. That was almost like that eight pound. And he hit harder than the eight pounder did. One pound, 11 ounces. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Chris Jacob Wheeler just caught a one pound, 11 ounce bass. He has moved into the lead. 30 pounds, two ounces. You're two ounces out of first place. One scoreable bass. Saving the best for last. It's not over yet. We're up by one ounce. Any minute, Chris can catch one. We got to catch one more to make this thing happen. That one will do it right there. That's old biggie. Old big boy. How about this one, Wheeler? Maybe? Baby. Four pounds, four ounces. <laughs> there you go. Chris Lane is now 34 pounds, five ounces. <laughs> so you need ten, you need you need a 10 pound, 10 ounce. Oh now. my gosh. What do you catch a four pounder? Four pounds, four ounces. Oh my god. I bet he's hollering. Don't oh, shoot, baby, he should be shooting! <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me old Chris Lance on a whopper plopper. I cannot believe we fished that entire pocket. Never caught one. Never had a bite. 30 seconds. One more. One more biggie. Two 
two pounds, eight ounces. All right, biggest fish of the day right at the end. Gorgeous Lake Belton fish. God, it's healthy. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Lines out, that's the end of the round. And this one's not gonna count. Whoo wee. Hey, that was a lot of fun. I'll tell you that. Absolutely enjoyed the heck out of it. Top water action at its finest. Good job, Chris Lane and Jacob Wheeler. Y'all did good running them down and passing me. You ain't gonna win them all, and that's okay. But this is the qualifying round, so hopefully that's a good little way. That's a good little little practice round <laughs> to get that blood flowing a little bit. It's not always pretty, but it's always a good time. And you know, it wasn't pretty today. We had some good moments. We had some good fish catches, and followed by lots of downtime. But I'll tell you what, this place has absolutely got them. Struggled most of the day, but got that one clue. Click. Got y'all. Excited to go on to the next round. Uh, we get those sudden death rounds. Those are always the most fun at Major League Fishing. So a score tracker is our best friend, yet it's our worst enemy. Um, let's go see if we can not take this one to the house. When you can catch them on top water like that and have big fish, man, it's, uh, it's awesome. So we'll see you in the sudden death round. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. Mossy Oak, hunt, fish, repeat. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. And by Barbasol Shaving Cream and Razors, a close, comfortable shave for the past 100 years. Today, 10 Major League Fishing pros kicked off the Academy Sports and Outdoors Heritage Cup. With no practice and no information, they had to adapt to Lake Belton and quickly locate the bass. So that's where we're gonna start. After a morning of small bites, these anglers began to key in on the giant Texas largemouth in the second and third periods. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Lane caught yes, the biggest sir. of the bunch, snatching four, five, and six pounders in murky water and off of rock walls. There you go. Ending the day with 34 pounds from only 12 bass. Oh, big boy. Let's catch up with Chris Lane to check out his winning baits in Bass Pro Shops, end of the line. Hi, I'm Chris Lane. And one of the keys, of course, the flopper, to win the elimination round here at the Heritage Cup, one of the things about this bait, if they're on it, it's going to be a great day. The rocks were the key today, off of the points. It was just one of those opportunities that allow you to make really long casts without getting caught up in field grass or lily pads or hydrilla. Catch big fish on the flopper bait, know when to throw it, nowhere. Yes, sir! With today's win, Chris Lane is advancing to sudden death and will be joined by Jacob Wheeler, Randy Howe, Gary Klein, Jeff Sprague, and Adrian Avina. The bottom four anglers will be heading home. Today's Barbasol close shave goes to Adrian Avina, who came into the third period in eighth place, but was able to string together multiple bites and cling to a sixth place finish. Yes, sir. Securing a spot in sudden death is made much easier when you land an eight pound, one ounce Berkeley big bass of the day. Yes, sir. This juggernaut bass was essential to Lane's first place victory. Eight pounder just choked it. <laughs> Yes, sir! Let's send it over to Marty Stone, who's with today's winner, Chris Lane. Fall of the year is supposed to be tough, but you made it look easy. And other than holding off Wheeler, it was easy. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, it, uh, it was an amazing day. You know, when you can get on a pattern with top water and you can dial in where those fish are going to be setting up, you can go throughout the whole lake and catch them like that, especially if all the conditions are the same where you're at, where you find them. And I think that was the key today, to really get in a pattern. Once I found that pattern, I think I called two or three of my shots, and they were big ones. And it just makes you feel good, because there's about nine times out of 10 you go out there and you call your shot, and you don't get to you know, actually produce a fish when you call it. Second cup, you win the elimination round, and you hold off one of the hottest anglers on the planet, Jacob Wheeler. What does it mean to win this round? 
Well, you know, he is the best angler in the world right now in the world rankings. And, you know, professional bass fishing, it turns something inside you where you don't want to lose. You know, you got a chance to beat the best bass fisherman in the world. You want to take advantage of that. So I turned it up a little bit there at the end, make sure that uh, I could hold him off. Chris Lane held off Jacob Wheeler and showed us there's quality bass in this lake. Now he's advancing to sudden death. Make sure you tune in next week for elimination round number two of the Academy Sports and Outdoors Heritage Cup. Presented by Magellan Outdoors from Waco, Texas. Until then, thanks for watching General Tire's Major League Fishing. Place has got some hogs in it.